So my name is Laura. Um, I am a senior tax consultant uh, here at BD Tax Consultants, um, and I'm all joined today by Ahad Chowdhury, who's also a tax consultant here at the firm. So a little bit about PD tax before we start. Um, so our aim is to enrich people's lives by making tax simple. Um, and we want to make sure that our clients are paying the right amount of tax, but also as little tax as possible by making sure that they're claiming all the reliefs that are available to them. So what we do, um, we provide tax advice. We also have a direct tax director service for accountancy firms. We prepare tax returns. Um, we carry out share valuations of companies. Um, and we can also assist with tax investigations, voluntary disclosures, and lots of other areas of tax where people might require assistance. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, so we'll aim to finish around 10 a.m. Um, so your microphones will be disabled throughout um, but if you do have any questions please type them into the Q&A box um, and we might have time to answer those at the end um, but if we don't we will contact you afterwards for a discussion about that um, and we'll just try to have a breakout session at the end if we have time but we might not have time today. Um, so just a point before we start the presentation is for general information only and it's not intended to constitute individual advice um, so it's recommended that you seek professional advice before taking any action. Okay, so in September, we had Quasi Quateng's mini budget. Um, we then had Jeremy Hunt's updates to that in October. Um, so just to make sure we all know what the situation was following Jeremy Hunt's announcements, I'm just gonna have a quick recap of those points. So in the mini budget, the plan was to reduce the basic rate of income tax to 90%. Um, however, that income tax cut what, from 2023 was abandoned um, as part of the changes. So the 20% rate remains. Um, the, as part of the mini budget, the plan was to remove the 45% additional rate tax for higher earners, um, but after, as part of the changes that was reinstate, reinstated so that the 45% additional rate also remains. Um, in relation to corporation tax, um, the, the rise in corporation tax will go ahead from April 2023 for firms making more than £250,000 of profit. And the rate will increase incrementally for companies making between 50,000 and 250,000. Uh, the dividend rate increase of 1.25%, which was introduced in April 2022, that will remain in place. Um, the off-payroll off working reforms introduced in 2018 and 2021 will also remain in place. The government will not proceed with a VAT-free shopping scheme for non-UK visitors, and the government will not proceed with freezing the alcohol duty rates. Um, so from the mini budget, these things were retained. Uh, so the national insurance rise reversal from November 2022 and the social health and social care levy was scrap, scrapped. Um, the cuts to stamp duty land tax, and those were also mentioned in the autumn statement. So we're going to talk a bit about those later on. Uh, energy support for households uh, and announcements regarding the annual investment allowance, the SEIS scheme, CSOP plans, so increasing the limits from April 2023. So I'm now going to just move on to the announcements from the Autumn Statement 2022 yesterday. So the first point is regarding income tax. So from the 6th of April 2023, the additional rate threshold will be reduced from 150,000 to 125,140. And other th the other tax thresholds, so the basic rate band, um, personal allowance for income tax, uh, NIC threshold and inheritance tax threshold have been frozen until April 2028. So just to illustrate the effect that this will have, um, you can see there, the, the, in, within your taxable income, currently the first 37,700 will be taxed at 20%. Currently then the next 112,300 is at 40%. And then the excess over that would be at 45%, assuming you've got income over 150,000. So we're looking here at the effects on the additional rate band. Um, however, following this budget, that's going to change so that you can see in that middle bracket, there'll be less taxed at 40% and more taxed at 45%. Um, and obviously those, those, those little bands are for the income 
above the personal allowance if you've got one. Um, so the personal allowance of 12,570 is available so that that amount of your net income is taxed at 0%. Um, it has now been fixed, as I mentioned on the previous slide, at 12,570 um, up to April 2028. So it's just going, the personal allowance is going to stay at that amount uh, up to that date. Um, and just a note on that, that it is reduced by one pound for every two pound. Um, that the adjusted net income is above 100,000. So it's reduced to zero if your net income is 125,140 or above. Um, so in relation to dividends, the tax-free dividend allowance is to be reduced from £2,000 to £1,000 from the 6th of April 2023, and then from the 6th of April 2024, it will be further reduced to £500. Um, and just to point out as well that the dividend rates were increased from April 2022 uh, by 1.25%, so you can see that they were already increased um, recently. In relation to capital gains tax, um, this is another change that's going to come in. Um, so the annual exempt amount for capital gains tax will be reduced from the £12,300 that it is currently to £6,000 from the 6th of April 2023. And then it will reduce further from the 6th of April 2024 to £3,000. So just a little example to show you the effect that this could have. Mr X has a gain of... £30,000 on a rent residential property, no private residence relief available, um, and he has no unused basic rate band available. So um, the gain is 30000 If you look currently, if you see if he had the annual exempt amount of 12300 you can see his tax on the left-hand side there. But for if he then disposed of the same property, had that, had that gain, the same gain, in, from the 6th of April 2024, but his annual exempt amount was only 3,000, then you can see that the tax there has increased significantly. Uh, in relation to stamp duty, so we saw in the mini budget um, that from, from the 23rd of September, first time buyers will not need to pay SDLT uh, on residential homes worth not more than 425,000, which is an increase from 300,000. And the government will also be increasing the max maximum property purchase price uh, for relief for first time buyers up to, to 625,000. So that's up from 500,000. Um, and also from the 23rd of September 2022, the SDLT threshold for residential home buyers increased from 125,000 to 250,000. Um, so it was just confirmed yesterday that those changes will be in place until the 31st of March 2025. Okay, so we're now going to have a poll. So after what I've just discussed, um, I'd like you to have a little think about your circumstances um, and answer our poll with the question, which is, do you think that these announcements will affect yours or your client's compliance obligations? So if you could just answer that for us now, um, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so I can see that from the results, 74% of you think that yes, this will affect your the client the uh, compliance obligations for you or your clients. 17% say no, and 9% have said maybe. Uh, so that's very interesting. And Ahad is just going to talk now about the effect um, that it could have on compliance obligations. So I'll pass over to you now, Ahad. Thanks, so um, that poll was quite interesting to see. Um, and I'm going to talk now about the compliance obligations that you and your clients may have. So the decrease in the annual exemption to 6,000 in 23-24 and 3,000 in 24-25 means that more gains are taxable and as a result, 
willing to be reported to HMRC. The other interesting element is that capital disposals must also be reported if the proceeds are four times the annual exemption. Now, this is something that catches quite a lot of people out because they sometimes believe that if they are within the annual exemption, they're finding that again does not need to be reported. However, in 23-24 tax year, if your proceeds are 24,000 or above, uh, with also the fact that if you're in the annual exemption or you made a capital loss, you will still need to report these disposals to HMRC. Uh, an interesting report came out in November 2020, which stated that uh, the reduction in annual exemption amount to uh, 6,000 pounds would result in more than 235,000 more individuals needing to report their capital gain. So I think that's something very important to uh, make clients and individuals aware of. Um, with the dividend allowance decreasing, individuals may now be in the scope of having taxable income that needs to be reported to HMRC for the first time. As ever, if you need any help with any of your compliance obligations, please feel free to contact myself, Laura, or any other member of the PD tax team. Now move on to research and development. Uh, this is quite an interesting um, move by Jeremy Hunt in what he has said. He had said that um, R&D relief had been uh, abused to a certain extent by some companies and uh, they were looking into that further. And given HMRC's crackdown on R&D relief lately in opening inquiries, it's quite evident. Um, but what was interesting was that for larger companies, uh, the research and development expenditure credit had um, increased from 13% to 20%. Uh, however, please note that um, this credit is a taxable receipt and the effective rate of the credit would be 15% for a company paying 25% corporation tax. For SMEs, um, the additional deduction has decreased from 130% to 86%. And for loss-making SMEs, the SME credit rate will also decrease from 14.5% to 10%. Moving on to VAT and employment. Um, the VAT threshold is to remain at 85,000 until March 2026. Now, whilst most of you may think that freezes don't affect you uh, in a huge amount, unfortunately, with the prices increasing within society, this will ultimately bring more businesses in the scope of registering and charging VAT on their supplies. So that's something that you should consider going forwards. Um, the employment allowance will remain at 5,000 pounds. And Jeremy Hunt also announced that the national living wage will also increase to £10.42. Moving on now to company car tax. Um, electric vehicles, um, the percentage is to stay at 2% until April 2025. However, going forwards from the 2025 to 26 tax year, it will increase by one percentage point per year until it's a cap of 5%. For the first time ever, electric vehicles will also be um, charged to vehicle excise duty, which means that in the first year, they will have a, a 10 pound road tax to pay. And from second year onwards, that would be 165 pounds. Okay, so, um... That's our summary of the main points that were raised yesterday in the autumn statement. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to give us a call on the number that's on the screen um, or email us, and get in touch with any questions that you have uh, following today's webinar. Um, so now we're going to see if anybody has asked any questions, um, we'll try to answer them now for you. Um, just give me one moment, I'm just getting them up. Okay. Um, someone would like to know what's happening with the annual investment allowance. So the annual investment allowance is going to remain at one million 
uh, as it was previously. Um, that temporary element has um, disappeared now, and that's a permanent change. Great. Um, someone will also know um, is that the question regarding capital assets disposals have to be reported if the proceeds are four times the annual exemption. Do you mean reporting on the tax return or the new CGT reporting in the tax year? Do you want me to answer that one? <laughs> yes, with more of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the for the th for the 60 day CGT, the UK on property CGT return, that's if, if there's um, any tax payable. Um but if yeah, so if if there's not a gain, if there's a loss, if you look in the tax return guidance, it does say that you do need to report it if it's if the proceeds are four times the annual exempt amount. I mean yeah that's what it is at the moment so i mean you'd need to keep an eye on it um, but just to be aware that's what it currently is and it would need to go on just the, the standard self-assessment tax return great um and someone would also like to know um if you could clarify about the r d credit now being taxable um and when does this come into effect i think the r d credit we, we might need to it might be worth us having a chat afterwards do you think I had just so that we can fully understand the circumstance um because yeah. I think it's quite it's quite hard to just kind of do it on the spot um if that's okay so whoever that was if you want to let us know um and get in touch with us and then we'll, we'll have another conversation with you afterwards if that's okay great um and um people have also asked if there have been any effects on business asset disposal um relief or EIS so nothing was mentioned yesterday um, on business asset disposal relief. Um, however, in the mini budget, which we had in September, um, there were announcements about um, SEIS, um, so which was increasing the limit. So um, from April 2023, companies will be able to raise up to 250,000, um, which is up from 150,000. And the gross asset limit has also increased to 350,000. Um, so and also the limit for relief um, was increased as part of that mini budget to 200,000, which is up from 100,000. So investors who invest in SEIS. Uh, obtain income tax relief um, through a tax reducer at 50%. So that limit of what they can invest and what they can claim the relief on has increased as well. Um, but if you want us to want to talk about that any further, just let us know and we can get in touch. But there wasn't, um, so that, that's come from the mini budget and it's still held, it was still, like it wasn't updated um, in October by Jeremy Hunt. So it wasn't mentioned. Okay, great. Um, I think that's all of the questions. We will um, send across a copy of the slides to everyone um, that's registered along with a link to register for our next webinar as well. Awesome, thanks Laura. Okay. Uh, uh, our next webinar will also be on the 1st of December. It's in conjunction with LCF Law and that will be on employment taxes. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you very much. We'll hopefully speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.